I've got a couple of fun ones this week as we try to track down the most elusive creature of all, the good Bigfoot horror film. Let's start squatching. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. Creature from Black Lake, a.k.a. Demon of the Lake and Silent Stalker, came out in 1976. Synapse Films just released a 4K restoration of the film on Blu-ray. It's directed by Joy N. Hauk Jr. and written by Jim McCullough Jr. A pair of kooky but determined college kids from Chicago set out on a van to Louisiana to investigate recent reports of a large bipedal creature roaming the swamps known as The Creature, more commonly known as Bigfoot. Once there, they run afoul of the local sheriff, meet some swell underage gals, get thrown out of a diner multiple times, and eventually encounter the creature themselves. Creature from Black Lake came along on the heels of Legend of Boggy Creek, but while Boggy Creek went down in history as a cult classic, Creature from Black Lake kind of faded into obscurity. And that's too bad. I might catch a lot of flack for this opinion, but I feel Boggy Creek is overrated, while Creature from Black Lake feels like an unearthed gem of a fine flick. That doesn't mean this isn't a goofy movie. There's a lot of goofy aspects, but Creature offers up some interesting theories, some nice suspenseful moments, a likable cast, and an actual story rather than just a series of events loosely threaded together. First and foremost, Creature from Black Lake delves into something that has been associated with Bigfoot research through the years, namely the fact that people don't really want to talk about the monster for fear that they will be looked at as crazy by the public. This seems to be a common phenomenon, and while there are just as many people like myself who want to believe and desperately would love to see the monster, there are others who are not only scarred emotionally for seeing the creature, but don't want to bring unnecessary attention to themselves because of the sightings. When the kids make it to Louisiana, it takes quite a lot of time to find someone willing to talk with them about the creature. I've never really seen a Bigfoot film delve into this topic so well, and it sets Creature from Black Lake apart from its contemporaries for doing so. Because the kids are looking at this from a research point of view, they point out this phenomenon of keeping the creature secret, especially from outsiders who may bring unneeded attention to themselves and their small town. The cast of Creature from Black Lake is pretty likable and impressive for the time. Empire of the Ants' John David Carson and House of a Thousand Corpses' Dennis Fimple play the two student researchers, Reeves and Pahu, respectively. While Fimple has an aw shucks mentality and comes off as quite a doof most of the time, Carson evens the team out as the hunky, level-headed one. Still, both exude a youthful enthusiasm that makes you root for their success and survival. The rest of the cast is made up of popular old coots you've seen in tons of older films. First off, you have Jack Elam. When you can't get George Buck Flower for your movie, you move on to Jack Elam to play the drunken outsider. And Elam does it well here as a mad trapper who we see encounter the creature during the opening credits. While Elam is often typecast as this type of character, he gives the character a lot of gravitas. Dub Taylor also pops up as the grandpappy of one of the witnesses of the creature, who is overprotective of his family and their well-being, but willing to open up and chat about it for a cool $25 when offered. Taylor often appears as the saloon owner or the cowhand in Western movies, but this more substantial role shows his range and likability much more. He's got some of the best lines in the movie regarding the rules of his home and the reluctance to talk about the creature. Rounding out the cast of Old Coots is The Last Picture Show and Gator Bait's Bill Thurman, who plays the sheriff, who don't take kindly to city folk poking their noses around where it ain't belong. Thurman is playing a cliched role here, but still manages to show a bit of tolerance and humanity in a pinch. He's surprisingly lenient when he catches his underage daughter hanging with these college kids. I guess that's just a sign of the times. 
I don't think it'd be taken as lightly these days. Finally, the writer of Creature of Black Lake, Jim McCullough Jr., plays one of the main witnesses of the creature, and while he is somewhat reserved in the role, he treats us to a song on the porch about taking his gal on a date on Saturdays that adds loads of down-home flavor. Overall, the cast feels genuine and lived in. These aren't the local non-actors that you saw in Boggy Creek. These guys are actual actors, and it makes a world of difference. The use of a college crew investigating Bigfoot isn't a new one. Most of the Bigfoot films of the time begin this way, but Creature of Black Lake uses this impetus for a story, the best of the bunch. Yes, it's not really feasible that students could get credit for going on their own and finding Bigfoot, but the film sells it and moves on to more interesting things. There's one flashback to a sighting that is decently paced, and while the bulk of the film isn't very suspenseful, I found myself caring for the lives of these locals and the kids more than most Bigfoot films. The climax amps up the suspense quite nicely as the students battle for survival against the beast and ended up coming out much worse for wear than they did going into this little adventure. There's even a fiery car crash that shows this film actually had a bit of budget, which is more than you can say for the bulk of the Bigfoot flicks. The creature himself looks okay. He's said to be massive, but because of it's a tight-fitting furry suit, it clings to the actor, making him look less imposing and rather slim. He's also not as tall as described, but due to some creative camera angles, he's made to look much bigger. The suit even looks good when it's wet, which is something that you can't say for a lot of the Bigfoot suits. All in all, this is a better looking Bigfoot costume than most. I'm going to give Creature from Black Lake four feet and two toes. There's a goofiness that undercuts a lot of the more creepier elements, but it goes through the typical Bigfoot story with style and has the cast to back it up. The ending is strong, and the film brings up themes like why people wouldn't want to talk about Bigfoot, which is not delved into much in the subgenre. Still, of the Bigfoot films of its era, Creature of Black Lake is my favorite of the bunch. Next up is Big Fur. Available on demand and digital download and streaming on Tubi from 1091 Media. Directed by Dan Wayne and written by Karen Everett, who is a story consultant, and George Langworthy. Ken Walker has always been an outsider, and in Big Fur, you find out why. Walker is looked at as one of the best in the taxidermy field. His works has won all sorts of awards. Now he's tackling his most challenging taxidermy work yet, Bigfoot. Big Fur follows the life of Ken Walker, depicting his formative years when he became fascinated with taxidermy, all the way to his dreams of recreating one of the most elusive creatures known to man. Through the course of this documentary, we get to know Ken, his family, and what it's like living with his obsession with taxidermy. For Ken, it's much more than simply stuffing an animal. He tries to capture the life it no longer has through posture, presence, and pure emotion. Even among his peers, Ken is looked at as a true artisan of his craft. The film follows Ken through the inception of this idea of creating a creature that is not recognized by science as actually existing to the detailed construction of every part of it. We see Ken pick out the giant styrofoam with which he carves the shape, the fur which he pieces together from different kinds of animals, and the all-important eyes of the beast. The film kind of skids off course in the last 20 minutes as we're made privy to a scandal that Ken is involved in. I won't reveal it here, but it does take the documentary on a detour that I think was too late in the film to mention, and it kind of distracts from the Bigfoot sculpture itself. Sure, these moments sort of humanized Ken, but I feel we get to know him pretty well even before these details are revealed, and I feel much of this is padding to make the film feature length rather than a simple one-hour documentary. If anything, it puts a very sad shade on the rest of the film, rather than highlighting Ken for the artist that he is. That said, the end result of Ken's efforts is pretty amazing. The creature looks right at home with the rest of the wild beasts on display at the World Taxidermy Championship. In the end, the creature is less menacing and more human than Ken seems to have intended, which turns out to be a nice metaphor about the field of taxidermy that has been the butt of many a Norman Bates joke and the scorn to many animal rights activists. While Ken presents as an oddball with his obsession with bringing dead animals to life 
and his equal appreciation for Roy Orbison karaoke, the film humanizes him as well. This is far from a horror film, but the documentary does belong in the cinema of the weird category, which I don't mind sharing with the horror genre. I'm going to give Big Fur two feet and four toes. If you're an appreciator of the artistic process and Bigfoot itself, you won't want to miss Big Fur. Stuck inside your reality